Hey, everybody. My name is Stuart Hamm, and I'm here at the Apogee Studios in beautiful, sunny Santa Monica, California, uh, to uh, just give you a little demo and, and brief discussion about my process when I do recording. These days, to make a living as a musician, you've got to wear a lot of hats, and you've got to be very aware of what's going on in trends in the music industry. Uh, and a lot of that is, is home self-recording. I think it's very important that uh, aspect of any musician's life right now is to know enough uh, Logic or Pro Tools and recording technique to be able to record yourself at home. So what I'd like to do is kind of go through my process and hopefully give you some tips about some things that you can use when you're recording your bass. First thing we want to decide is what pickups we're going to use. And in general, there's some, a few steadfast rules that you can think about. The pickup closest to the bridge is generally a more trebly distinct sound. Think Jocko, we all do. And it's not only the position of where it is on the body that has more of a mid-range trebly sound, but it's also pickups are usually put there that will pick up that sort of sound. The neck pickup is gonna have a thicker, more guttural sound. All right, let's go back to the other pickup, play the same thing, you can hear the difference. particular bass I'm playing, the Washburn Stu Ham Hammer, also has a piezo pickup, which is uh, picks up the vibrations on the bridge. And I'm playing all these flat, and of course on top of that I can add or take off bass or treble. Uh, one way I would use this pickup, the piezo, is if I turn the treble down, turn the bass up. Right, a real sort of acoustic kind of sound. Um, so that's a basic. The neck pickup is gonna be thicker and fatter. The bridge pickup is gonna be clear. And of course, you can blend them. Because it's got the thickness of this, just the bridge, the neck pickup. But it adds a little bit of clarity to it too. Of course, the other equation that we could throw into it is the plectrum. And it's just another sound for your arsenal, for your repertoire. Now here's the thing where, I don't think very often I'd use a pick with the bridge pickup. Sort of thin. Definitely when I think pick, I'm thinking the neck pickup. And here with the pick, the neck pickup is gonna sound nice on its own. Of course, there's different ways of playing it wide open. Muting it. Maybe if I blend the two of the pick, what is that gonna sound like? Right, so my initial reaction then is gonna be that I'm gonna use these two pickups. And what I'm gonna have to do then is just try to record a little of the song with fingers and with pick and see which feels better. Uh, which fits in with the track better, and also what's gonna inspire me to come up with a better bass part. But the main thing to remember is that the sound is coming from your fingers. You can't recreate uh, a sound that you can't play with your fingers. If you're a guitar player and or a very mediocre bass player and you think you put in a plug-in for an Ampeg SVT, you're gonna sound like Billy Sheehan. It's not gonna happen. So again, you want software and to be able to accurately record what you're doing. I generally have the bass up uh, pretty heavy in the mix, 
pretty loud. And the reason is because I want to be able to track playing with a really light touch. One thing that I think it takes a lot of people a while to realize is that the bass is not going to sound thicker and better the harder you play. And this is something that's very difficult to, to come to groups with in a, in a live environment. Because if you're playing and you're really sweating and you want to play... It it's, this sounds clacky. When if you play it... I mean, what a difference in sound. Uh, and obviously the sound man is gonna like it better if you play the nice. Right, a nice controlled attack. So by putting the bass up ungodly loud in the mix, it's gonna force me to play with a very light touch uh, so that I won't overpower the rest of the tracks and I can get a nice, fat, even sound on the bass. One other little trick for you uh, bass players and also you guitar players if you're recording bass yourself tuning. Obviously we wanna get, uh, get ourselves in tune, but here's a little secret for you is that always tune the bass just a hair flat. Uh, I've worked with some guitar players that are very, we'll say the word is picky. And uh, we, I've, I swear, it's one of those things that you wouldn't know it just by the meters, but if you tune a bass and a guitar to A440, the bass sounds a little sharp. And when the bass is sharp in a track, it makes the whole thing edgy. And the bass is supposed to bring everything together and make the track sound relaxed. So I tune just to the south of, of A440, and I think that you'll find if you do that too, it's the whole track is just gonna sound a little more relaxed and sit back a little better.